Hey everybody, Terry White here with Adobe, and it's my pleasure to give you your first walkthrough of Adobe Firefly, our generative AI public beta. So let's go ahead and dive in and take a look. Now, to get to it, uh, it's actually not built into any of your apps at this point. It's a web site. So what you would do to get to this is you would simply go to firefly.adobe.com, and whether you're a Creative Cloud member or not, you can go in and play. You're going to sign in with a free Adobe ID, and you can, of course, then request access to the beta. And once you're in, you might also want to join our Discord channel, which uh, is where we do all of our discussions. You can give feedback and you ask questions, so forth and so on. Now, before I go any further, I just want to point out that for a lot of people that have questions about Firefly, they have been addressed in our public FAQ. And one of the, first, one of the main questions people ask, I'm just going to go to this one question. I have it open, open in a tab here. And that is the biggest question people have when you talk about generative AI is, what was the training data for Fire, for your AI, in this case, for Firefly? And I just want to read this along with you. I've highlighted it just so you know. Firefly was trained on Adobe Stock Images, which, of course, we have the rights to, um, openly licensed content, and public domain content where copyright has expired. So it, we didn't scan the internet. We didn't uh, use your Behance images, your Creative Cloud files, or any of that stuff. Basically, this is it. So if it's not in this paragraph, we didn't do it. All right, so with that said, now I got that important piece of information out of the way, let's talk about it. Now, I'm not signed in in this browser, so I'm gonna pop over to the browser where I am signed in, and uh, or the, the window where I'm signed in with me, and I'm already logged in, I don't have, I'm already in the Discord, so now I can try out one of these three things, two of which are active today as of this recording, one of which is coming soon. So the big one is text to image, where you can type in text and have the AI generate an image based on your text prompt. So when I click that one, I can see some examples, and these are always going to be randomized. And so you scroll through and you see one you like, and then you can go in and just click on it and not only just view it to get the information, but you can click on it to see what they typed to get this. So for example, I, I like this uh, chess piece. I play chess. So when I click on that, it shows me uh, four results. Uh, Firefly will always show you four results based on the text prompt. And more importantly, it shows me the text prompt. So in this case, it was uh, chess knight piece made of glass, low poly. I'm gonna go ahead and change that. Let's say I don't want the knight, I want a queen. So now when I click generate, that will generate based on the changes I've made to the prompt. So you can make as many changes as you want. You can rewrite the whole thing. You can say whatever you wanna say, and then it will give you those choices. Now, if you see one you like, I highly recommend before you go any further, go ahead and click the download button to save it to your hard drive. It'll end up in your downloads folder. Um, just like any other image you download from or anything you download from a browser. And then it's on your hard drive. You can do whatever you want at this point. So if you lose this, meaning you keep generating, you can't get back to it, you'll always have that one that you downloaded on your hard drive. And another cool button is besides the download is this one on the left side. I really like maybe this style, show me similar results. So when I click show similar, notice that one stays and it generates three more that are similar to it. Now, once those three pop up, which there they are, then I can go from there. And so let's say I really like this one. I'll go ahead and download it. As I taught you, definitely download it first. And then if you really like a result, you can also let the team know. They have a thumbs down, thumbs up. If I click thumbs up, I can say, hey, the prompt was accurately interpreted. Interpre interpreted. Uh, it closely matches the style and theme. It's high quality. You know, you can check off all the boxes that you want. And then that lets the team know to do more of that. And vice versa, if you get a result you definitely think is bad, let the team know by clicking the thumbs down. And then you can also tell them all the reasons why it's bad and even put in your own note if you want. Okay, so that's how you would use the inspiration. Now, one of the first prompts that I put in when I did this was 19, when I first got access, was 1920s camera in a 2023 20, coffee shop. All right, I promise you I won't do too much typing, but let's go ahead and click generate and that will give you that particular set of results. And I remember when I got this, I was kind of blown away by the results. They really, really, really look good. Now, I can tell that this is a coffee shop, for example, because that's what I asked for. But if you looked at this, you might not know that that's a coffee shop because you don't really see any coffee. This one has one, but the other ones don't. So I can be very specific. I can say, with a cup, or, or no, better yet, with a latte on the table. So now I'm telling it, hey, add that to this prompt to give me those results. And once it comes back, um, I'll, I'll see if there's one that I really like. And this one gave me two lattes. This one gave me a latte that's kind of like in front of the camera, so I don't like that one. That one looks really small. And so maybe I would say a large latte on the table or venti. I wonder if it would use venti. Those who know will know. Anyway, large latte on the table. Let's see if that gives us a better, a bigger latte. Hopefully it won't go overboard. 
And yeah, there's, there's a large one back there. This one's more closer to what I want. This one didn't have the cup. That one's still kind of small compared to the camera. So maybe I want more like this one. So I say similar. There was, it wasn't one I really wanted to download, but they were getting close. There we go. Now we're in the ballpark of what I'm looking for. So I can say like, cause this one gives more focus on the camera. This one gives them evenly. So I'm gonna go ahead and download that one too. And then you would just keep going from there. Now, uh, it's, it's just amazing what you can get from these prompts. So I'm going to give you one that was, I posted this one on Facebook. I never gave people the prompt. I'm gonna give it to you now. So you can kind of see what I did to get these, these images. I like science fiction. I like aliens. So <clears throat> I'm gonna say two front facing, highly detailed cyborg with a human endoskeleton lights entering a spaceship in the distance. Generate. <laughs> so a very detailed prompt for what I'm looking for. And then we're gonna get into some other things over here on the side. Uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of cool, we're getting there. I'm gonna say that I want this aspect ratio to be widescreen. So it's gonna regenerate based on a widescreen aspect ratio. And I'm also gonna pick photo, cause I want, ooh, I kinda like that. I should have downloaded that one before I click photo. But let's go ahead and say photo, because you have your content type of photo, uh, none, graphic, and art style. So art would be more like a painting, graphic would be more like um, vector illustration. And then you have different styles. So you have uh, techniques, you have movements, you have themes. Uh, let's go to movements. So steampunk, vaporwave, science fiction, I'm gonna go ahead and pick that one. And you can go from there. You can even do color and tone. So I can say uh, vibrant color. And then I can say lighting would be golden hour. And then composition, I'm gonna say uh, shot from, uh, I'm gonna do blurry background. I could do, uh, actually also could have picked um, uh, wide angle, but uh, we'll, we'll leave it at that for now. Let's go ahead and generate those. And all of the things that you picked on the right-hand side, you don't have to type into the prompt because they will appear in the bottom. So you can uncheck or, or, or knock off any ones that you don't want. And you know, like for example, I really like this one, but it didn't stick to the number two. It gave me three of those. So I could say maybe something similar to that, but I'm gonna go ahead and download that one because I kind of really like that one. Uh, let's download it. And by the way, I clicked on it so you can see it bigger if you want. And then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say, yeah, similar to this, give me some more. And again, it's generating three more based on that one and what I said below. So now I'm getting, getting to the money shot here. This is kind of what I like. I like this one, I like this one. And uh, <laughs> kind of cool of them looking at each other. And so I could just go from there and I can of course give thumbs up to the ones I like, thumbs down to the one that gave me too many and explain why and go from there. All right, I'm gonna get out of this because I could spend all day in this particular part of Firefly. Let's jump over to the next section and I'm gonna go ahead and jump back, jump back to text effects. And this is the one that also is so much fun and blows me away because this is simply text. You can scroll through and see examples of the ones that are here that, that the team picked. So like for example, tiger fur, who doesn't like tiger fur? And because I clicked one of the examples, it always makes the word Firefly, but you can go in and change the word to whatever you want. So I could change the word to, for example, love and um, refresh it. Actually, I didn't have to refresh it. It was, it was rendering it with the word love. And there it is, love, uh, waiting for that E to pop in, but there it is, love as tiger. And unlike just going into Photoshop where you would have a tiger pattern and just filling your text with this, this is actually contouring the design to each individual letter, giving me fur, fur off the off the different bits of the type itself. I can go in and change uh, the kind of font that it is as well. I can go in and change the background color. For example, I would, maybe I would most likely want it to be transparent so that I can put it on top of something else, let's say in Photoshop. And then I can just keep going from there. So let's do one more. Let's do uh, spring uh, flowers with hearts and love. I don't know what it's gonna give me for that, but let's see. There we go. Kind of exactly what I asked it for. And then if I like it, I download it. And that gives me a transparent ping file that I can use anywhere I want. Now, speaking of use, these are for playing around because it is a public beta. This is not for commercial use just yet. We gotta wait for us to get it all settled and get it down. And for those of you that again, have questions on the FAQ, questions on uh, that we don't answer in the FAQ, head over to that Discord channel and ask away. So hopefully, hopefully you got something out of this and how cool this can be. And I only touched the surface. I didn't get into every little detail in the right-hand panels of what you can do, but you can go in now and play and you now you know how to get started. Cheers, everyone. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.